This is Contractor Sense with Ruth King. Welcome to Contractor Sense and a brand new year. Welcome to 2021. At Contractor Sense, you discover ideas, tactics, news, and information that matters to your contracting business and you. I'm your host, Ruth King. This episode is sponsored by HVAC Trustbooks. Go to HVACTrustbooks.com to discover how this tool can help you close more sales. Thank you for joining us. Here's how we will help your business and you today. This is a two-part series about getting ready for a profitable and productive 2021. And I wanted to take a little bit of time to just kind of set the stage for 2021 and some of the things that I hope that you do. Um, The last podcast of 2020, we talked about the financial side of things that were good and so that you wouldn't grow to $2 million by accident. In these first two podcasts of 2021, I want to talk about it more from the the marketing side, the customer service side, the taking care of customer side, because I think, you know, the only way to be profitable is to take care of your customers profitably. The only way to build wealth is to take care of your customers profitably and build the wealth through maintenance and maintenance agreements. So over these next two sessions, we're going to for all intents and purposes, spend and explore a lot of things in there. So first question to you is, are you always losing money or barely breaking even in the first quarter of the year or, you know, any series of months? You know, some of my clients who are really in the um, upper north areas of the country have phenomenal first quarters. It's the summers that are really bad for them. Um, If you are in the south, the first quarter as a general rule is not real good. But then by the time we get through first quarter, it's starting to get warm, it's starting to get hot. People are starting to need their air conditioning systems again. So, you know, if any period of time of your year is very slow and you, you know, traditionally lose money in those types of times of year, Why are you doing that? Well, it's always like that. Or that's the way it's always been. It doesn't have to be that you have to work your butt off the rest of the year or your entire company has to work their butt off the rest of the year to cover the losses of first quarter. So I'm going to start this year off with, are you ready to do something different? If you just answered yes to that question, Then you have to ask yourself this question. Do you believe you can do it? Or is your mindset stuck with, well, we've always had a lousy first quarter. That's the way it's always been, and that's the way it's going to be forever. Not necessarily. I mean, mindset has a lot to do with whether you can get out of having a lousy first quarter or a lousy couple of months, because we've always done it, all right? So I'm going to give you some ideas, and the questions that should be going through your mind is, how do I apply these ideas to my business? If you truly and truly believe that you're sick and tired of a few months a year that are really bad, and you really and truly don't want to do that in 2021, so pay attention, okay? Will you apply the ideas, or will you go back to, this is the way it's always been, you know? All right, you want to do it. Yeah, Ruth, I want to do this, but, you know, my team is so resistant to change. (sighs) Who's writing their paychecks is generally my answer to that. It really is a situation that, you know, if you're focused on it and you actually pay attention to it and you actually follow up on it and you track it and you do it and you keep in your mind why you are doing it, guess what? The rest of your team will follow. So if you're committed and you stay committed and they see you're staying committed, they will follow your lead. Okay, And if not, then you have a choice to make and a decision to make. Are they an appropriate member of your team or not? And if you decide the answer is no, then they go through what I call my career readjustment program. Okay. Your choice. All right. So I'm going to assume that you don't want any more negative questions months and that you that you are sick and tired of having to work your butt off and your team work their butts off for nine or 10 months to cover two rotten months of the year. So let's get going. One of the things that 
I've always said for any construction company, whether you're HVAC, plumbing, electrical, pool and spa, generator, whatever, and even think, even companies like pest control or lawn care or something along those lines, the most important thing that you do is maintenance. And we are going to focus on maintenance, all right? Maintenance builds trust. Maintenance can help you build even cash flow, it's recurring revenue. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on and on. But the major, the, the major thing is that it b- does build trust. And that's what you want is the customer to trust you and you have the trust in the customer. So once you have maintenance, maintenance will give you service. Maintenance will also give you replacements. And you're going to find that you're not going to make a killing on maintenance. It's not meant to do that. It's meant to more than break even, i.e. after overhead is taken into consideration, not just break even on a gross profit basis. You've got to break even and have a net profit per hour of at least five bucks an hour. All right. You know, get a little profit in there. You'll find that you do get the service work and you do get the replacement work. Most of my clients who have maintenance agreements, when they go and do replacements for their maintenance agreement clients, their closing ratio is north of 80 percent. Some is north of 90 percent. Their salespeople love going to a proposal for a maintenance agreement client. Why? Because they're pretty sure they're going to get the job. I mean, you know, with an 80 plus percent closing ratio, that's a pretty good closing ratio versus somebody who doesn't know you from a hole in the wall, saw you from an ad that you placed somewhere. There's no trust. With maintenance agreements, there's absolute trust. So, you know, as you get more and more into the maintenance agreements and you enroll more and more and more, then you're in a situation where you're going to get more and more replacements, which is, you know, quite frankly, the biggest moneymaker. Replacements can make generate more net profit per hour than service, and they definitely generate more net profit per hour than maintenance. All right. So I want you to start thinking about maintenance, and we're going to talk over the next um, couple of podcasts about maintenance clients, not talking about how to do maintenance or anything else like that, but I want you to figure out in your mind where maintenance really fits into what you are doing. Okay. All right. When we get back from the break, we're going to keep going on some really phenomenal things to do for 2021. Thanks for listening to Contractor Sense. We will be right back. Do you ever have warranty leak issues? One of Ruth King's clients did about four years ago. Thousands of dollars in expense and unhappy customers. She solved this problem for him though. How? With a leak letter that every customer must sign with a service technician discovers a refrigerant leak. Once they implemented the letter, there were no more warranty leak headaches. No warranty leak callbacks. Happier customers. The surprising result was more replacement sales too. To get a copy of the leak letter for free, just send Ruth an email at ruthking at hvacchannel.tv. That's ruthking at hvacchannel.tv. You can't. That's what my daughter Kate told me when I said I wanted to make financials fun. The gauntlet was laid down. The red blanket was waved in front of the bowl. Ronin the Rubber Duck was born. This ebook is a whimsical look at financials from a duck's perspective. To get this fun, easy to read Kindle book, go to Amazon and search for Ronin the Rubber Duck Dives into Financials. That's R O N A N, the Rubber Duck Dives into Financials. Let me know if I made financials fun for you. We're back. Thank you for listening to Contractor Sense. Before the break, I gave you some things to think about and the fact that we're going to focus on maintenance and and turning our customers into maintenance clients. So I want you to visualize a bullseye. Okay. In the center of the bullseye are your clients, and these are your maintenance agreement customers. They have committed to you. They've signed a piece of paper as a general rule. Sometimes they can't if they're commercial. Otherwise, they have to go out to bid. But as a general rule, they're loyal to you and you're loyal to them. The next string out are your customers. These are people who have used your company in the past, but they have not signed a piece of paper. They're not as loyal. They might see a competitor's truck in their neighbor's driveway and try them next time. No loyalty. But they've used you. They've written a check or they've given you a credit card or something along those lines. So we have clients in the bullseye, customers the next ring out. And the next ring out after that is prospects. These are people who have talked to you. You have given them a proposal, but they've never done business with you. Okay. 
And after prospects come suspects, which is the next ring out. And yeah, I know who that company is. Yeah, maybe one day I'll call them. Yeah, maybe one day I'll have a need. But there is some familiarity with your company and your company's name. Never used you, never had contact with you. And then the white part of the bullseye is, you know, anybody, anywhere who can potentially use your, your services, okay? So if we start with our bullseye and our client base, we want to turn our customers into clients, our prospects into customers into clients, our suspects into prospects, into customers, and then into clients. We want the bullseye, i.e. our clients, our maintenance agreement customers, to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you can visualize that, you're in a situation where we're going to look at everything we do from a marketing perspective is done so that we build that center of the bullseye bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with more maintenance clients, okay? So that's how contractors should go to market, thinking that way. Most manufacturers go to market the other way. They start out in the vast ocean. Why? They do radio ads, TV ads, you know, things along those lines that promote them. And, you know, you might get 30 seconds in a TV ad, but that TV ad goes everywhere. You know, if you do it in the city of Atlanta and you do a radio spot in Atlanta where I live, you're in a situation where the signals go from Atlanta north to Chattanooga, which is two hours by car, and south to Valdosta, which is four hours by car. So not only do you get people in the Atlanta area, you get people all the way from Chattanooga to Valdosta, which you could never use your services. Why waste your money and time and effort on that? You're much more effective going local, doing things that are local in your community, making sure that you're in a situation that people who will do a Google search recognize your company name. Because it's been proven that if you do a Google search and you don't know who any companies are, you're probably going to go to one of the Google certified companies and they're getting more and more aggressive of being Google certified. So get your name out there. Do some local things. Do some things with charities. Do things that help you build your customer base up that way. Okay. All right. So we're going to get that bullseye as big as we possibly can get it. And we're going to talk about things for the rest of this podcast and in the next podcast to help you get that bullseye getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So first, let's take inventory of what you have. You've got a database of customers and clients, right? You have people who own a maintenance agreement, or if you're just starting your program, you've got customer base. And all of you have customers who've used your company but don't own maintenance agreements, okay? You do have maintenance plans, and I'm assuming that you have them or are going to be starting a phenomenal program in 2021. And you have field employees. Even if you're the only field employee, there are field employees. So there are employees, there are maintenance plans that you have with customers or are going to start with customers, and there you have a database of customers or a database of maintenance agreement clients, preferably both. Okay. So your goal and it may not happen in 2021, is to cover the entire overhead of your company with maintenance plans. Think about it. If the entire overhead of your company was covered with maintenance plans, number one, you'd never have to worry about cash flow, right? You had a slow month. There's still cash flow coming in the door from your maintenance customers. Or you've gotten it in advance and you've put it in a savings account like you should. And so when the slower times come, you don't have to stay up at night worrying about where you're going to get the money for payroll. All right. So maintenance agreement clients can pay the entire overhead of your company. So let's assume that your maintenance agreement is $100. And I think that's really low for a maintenance agreement these days. More I'm seeing around the country are more like two, three, and sometimes in really expensive parts of the country, San Francisco, New York, Chicago, L.A. It's almost it's over $300 these days. And it's expensive 
if for somebody in the South to say three hundred dollars, for somebody up north, no big deal. So depending upon how much it costs you to to do the maintenance and make sure that you have a five dollars net profit per hour profit at least, that's what your maintenance agreement pricing is. All right, let's assume that you have two hundred thousand dollars is your overhead, and your maintenance agreements are two hundred dollars a piece. That means you need a thousand maintenance agreements to cover the entire overhead of your company. Now, if you don't have that, then guess what? You got to figure out how to get a thousand maintenance agreements. And you may not be able to get them all in 2021. It may take you longer. But the reality of the situation is figure out what the number needs to be and then figure out how you're going to get to that number if you're not at that number. I promise you, you will sleep a whole lot better at night when you actually have maintenance agreements and enough maintenance agreements to cover the entire overhead of your company. It's cool. It absolutely is cool. So thank you for joining us. Choose one thing that you discovered and implement it in your business. These ideas, tactics, and strategies help you make more money, have more free time, and give back. If you like today's program, spread the word. Please review this podcast on any device you're listening to it on. Help a fellow contractor make more money, too. For comments or questions, call me at 770-729-0258 or email Ruth King at hvacchannel.tv. Thanks for listening. Have a great and profitable day.